Welcome, friends and family of Traveling Stories. We're super excited that you're joining us this afternoon, and uh, we're extremely excited to have a pastor in the Anderson area at Rejuvenate Church. His name is Jason Wilson. Um, we were just talking a while ago, and they're on their fifth year at Rejuvenate Church. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit, but thank you so much, Pastor, for coming along with us. Yeah, man, thank you uh, for inviting me and, and letting me be a part of uh, just uh, sharing and sharing my life and, and um, you know, just engaging the people, your audience and, and those that are out there. Uh, hopefully it's a time of, uh, it'll be a time of inspiration for them. That's right. That's right. And, and I met uh, uh, Pastor Jason at a couple events. I know uh, Unite events that we were had a couple of years ago. Man, that, we need to get those back going. We uh, it was about three or four years ago, I think. And, Probably um, been four years ago or yeah, so. Yeah. There was a bunch of churches in the Anderson area that would just get together and worship. Um, um, we have a mutual friend, uh, Kevin Pickens, who a uh, worship leader, um, good guy, uh, great, amazing um, worship leader, um, and different others. And, and I, I watch Pastor Jason's messages and different things. And so I'm glad that you've joined us. And um, I, we always start off with this question. And we say it's an easy one until we really start thinking about it. Um, mm -hmm. And that is, how was your life before you encountered Christ? <clears throat> you know, I, I, we have time constraints. So I, I have to, you know, kind of just be be quick with it. You know, it was it was obviously, a, a, I'll just say it was very empty. And, uh, you know, I had some challenges in my childhood and, um, you know, uh, not to, uh, not to put anything on, on my folks and all my parents divorced when I was two, you know, I went, um, back and forth through court, things like that for a long time. So it was just kind of a tumultuous deal, you know, battling there and, and being in the middle, being stuck in the middle that created a lot of probably a lot of personal insecurities and things inside of me that obviously, uh, you know, transcended time. And, um, as I got on up in a, in a, you know, as a young person, a teenager, I, uh, I, you know, I didn't have really a, a great self-esteem, you know, and just uh, really didn't have a lot of confidence in myself. Um, and, you know, for, for various reasons, the only thing that I really ever found saw was in, I played football for a long time and, and I had the, the privilege of being pretty okay at that. And so that, that created a, a, a safe space for me in my life. I don't know where I'd be, you know, uh, had God not graced me with that. You know, I played that for a long time. Um, but, Either way, that was really probably the only identity I had. I did grow up in church. Um, I, I grew up in the Church of God, and uh, you know, it was was my my family was more or less, or one side of my family, my paternal side of my family was more or less inundated in the Church of God. And my my maternal side was, uh, you know, had Southern Baptist roots, uh, but I grew up in the Church of God, um, and you know, did the whole, you know, just what you do, the whole church thing, you know, youth group and all that. But I mean, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a relationship, you know, Definitely. I don't even know if I re even really knew how to have a relationship. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know. And, and, um, uh, I don't know that anybody, many people in the church even knew how to lead somebody into having a personal relationship. I, I, I know conversion has been a big thing, but discipleship has really sucked in the church Definitely. for a long time. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, anyway, I was, um, uh, you know, I just found myself I, I, when I was 17, well, I was 18. I just turned 18 years old. I was called into ministry between my freshman and sophomore year in college. Um, never forget that moment. Probably the only time I feel like I've ever heard God's audible voice. It was shaking. It was, it was, you know, ground shaking, uh, for me. And I ran from that, ran from that for seven years. Um, and, um, you know, really that, that seven years, even with all the challenges I had as a child was probably the, the emptiest place that I've ever been in my life because obviously I was running from that. Um, but I was, I, you know, I never had a drug problem, never had alcohol problem. I had a, another drug problem, which was a woman problem. And so I just tried to, um, find love or embrace, you know, wherever I could get it. And, uh, but yet, you know, you could, you know, you could hang out, run around with two or three women, even in a day and still come home by yourself and you're just completely empty. That's right. And, um, you know, I had, um, I, I, I don't really know totally what, what led to just the, the encounter that I had other than, I mean, I, obviously I'd spent seven years running. I knew the truth 
I knew, you know, the Holy Spirit was, was just drawing my life. And I guess I finally realized I could not outrun it. And I was so tired from trying to, and, and so empty inside uh, that, you know, I think really what it was is, and I wasn't even at church. I was actually in, in, in a gym. I had a personal training gym. Mm-hmm. I was in the middle of a gym and uh, I, I just broke, man. I was by myself. I just broke, you know, sitting there lifting. You're all trying to be all, you know, big and, and strong, you know, and I just broke, man. And, and found myself in that moment, just, I was beside myself. I mean, I couldn't control, you know, what was going on in that moment. And uh, the biggest thing that really shifted my life in was, um, uh, in that moment, God began to value me yes. and begin to uh, tell me what he thought about me, what he believed about my life, what he had planned for my life. Uh, and the fact that even carrying back to my past, um, it, it, it sounds kind of odd to say it, but even the things that I had went through and shouldered, God, uh, he placed value in that from the standpoint that he was like, I trusted you to be able to, to handle that. I trusted you. I was building your back, That's right. you know, to carry, carry something. And I trusted you and, and to carry some things that maybe would have broken somebody else. And, and it's, it's weird to say, but it's almost like when he began to say those things, rather than having this despair that why did I have to go through all this type of stuff? It was like a badge of courage and honor. And all of a sudden I was like, my God, he, he believes in me like that. And, uh, so it was really just God beginning to value my life and, t- and, and tell me who I was and begin to create identity there. And I mean, that was, uh, that's been, that's been a taint that is, uh, you know, our, or the well that I've drawn from even that moment, that's been a well I've drawn from forever. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm such an identity guy myself and, and, and a purpose guy that that's, that's just really what it was. It wasn't a church service. It wasn't, you know, this and this and that matter of fact, after I really responded to God in that and, and, and wanted to sell out to the call that was on my life, I went back to the church that I was, that I'd grown up at and told him, Hey, listen, I'm, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm called to the ministry. I'm called, you know, to, to lead. And, and, um, I had three leaders in my life that I had been a part of my life in that church that for one reason or another, I don't know if maybe I had just run my course with them. Yeah. But, Either they didn't know what to do with me and they didn't know how to lead me to a place of, you know, of, uh, and, and, and really what to do. They didn't know how to raise up a leader. And I, I think that's probably to some degree what it is, or either they were just so, you know, fed up with me that they didn't even want to try. Yeah. And so I actually left, I left the church of God. I left the, uh, the church that I grew up at and it was just by chance that I got connected to a guy that just, um, uh, gave me an opportunity in my call. So that's kind of, that's kind of, you know, what it was like just in a very brief nutshell. Definitely. Now I know you said um, like, you know, football was your identity for a long time. And, um, and I think we, uh, as, as people, when we're not living for Christ, we try to find identity in other things that are, um, we're either good at or, uh, uh, you know, you know, football, sports, a job, uh, uh, you know, schools are, you know, education, or we find identity in who we're around or who we're with. Um, Mm -hmm. And and when we have that identity, there comes a time, and I know uh, when you're playing football, I know you played in college, but then it comes to an end. Um, And and how devastating is that when you finally figure out that what you built your identity on? You know, uh, so mine may be a little bit different than than some folks to some degree because I, I, um, I, you know, I was called to ministry before, uh, you know, while I was still playing football Definitely. and, and I was still playing foot, you know, I believe that, that God really used football when I was four and five and six years old and coming up and, and through high school and all, he used that, uh, to help preserve me a little bit, you know, to give me an outlet and to give me something that I could believe in myself in. That's right. But once I got to a place, you know, and, and got older and got on up into college and once I received a call to ministry or, you know, and, but I, in a, in a call to go to a deeper place with God, but I didn't really respond to that. At that point, um, that was something else that God had presented to identify my life with that I think he, he, he could have, he would have left football in my life, maybe even longer than it was and been able to use it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Had I made sure to answer that call and put him first I but because you. I didn't, 
Um, you know, I think he allowed things to happen the way it did. I, you know, I, I, I played my years of college. I played a, a not even a full year. I played a half a year of developmental league ball, and that's where I had a head injury to end my career. And so mine didn't come from, hey, you just can't play anymore or whatever else. You know, from a standpoint of ability, it came from a doctor saying no. And um, uh, and I just really believe that kind of that down turn probably towards my my last year of college ball and only to, uh, to, to trying to do other things with it that had I really responded to God in the right way in college, I think he probably would have used it a little bit differently. But uh, because it became more of my identity, it still was my identity and not him. And I yeah. wasn't surrendering to that. He, he, you know, he's not going to let anything be an idol in your life. That's right. Uh, and so that's what he did. He, he, he took it out from under me. That was devastating because I still hadn't responded at that point to his, to his call. So that was devastating for me. Um, something that I, that yes it did it, I did have a lot of identity in um and something that I was I, you know I'd put so much of myself in something that was I guess so um I was so passionate about I'm I'm 42 I just turned 42 years old 3 weeks ago you know and or 2 weeks ago and and it's been 20 uh years since I you know got hurt mm-hmm. and the passion is, is it ain't left. It, yeah, you know, I, it, it's generated in a different way now, you know, but right. the passion ain't gone. I mean, if I still had the ability to play, I'd go play. Right. Um, so he, I, he had to, I think he had to snatch that out from under me and uh, really wake me up. Uh, I've always heard, you know, and, and teach that, um, you know, that when God's really trying to get a message in your life uh, to, to, to shift something in your life, he'll first speak to you in your spirit. And if you shut that door, he'll send a messenger. He'll send somebody. And if you shut that door, he'll create destruction to wake you up. And that's kind of the last ditch effort. And I think in that regard, uh, he had spoke to me. He had probably sent several people and uh, he had to bring destruction to, to wake me up. That's right. And, and, you know, we think about it and some of us think of that, well, why are we serve a God like that? But I think God for a God like that, because he's, um, you know, we sing the song, you know, reckless love. We talk about how he'll break down walls and he'll do these things. And that shows you a type of God that we are, that we have, that he's going to try to use everything that he possibly can to bring you back to him yeah, and, yeah. and have a relationship with him. Yeah, that's right. He, he, you know, he, I think the, the, the sovereignty of God, he, it says, you know, that he, you know, God has a God of purpose. There's nothing that he, he creates that doesn't have a reason behind it. He doesn't waste, you know, even his ideas. And so, um, to, to know that he, you know, he developed, uh, when it says, I know, you know, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's wombs, you know, your mother's womb and, and, and the plans that I have for you and all the things that we've forever quoted, we have to submerse ourselves to making the Bible literal and personal. That's true. It's a true thing. Mm-hmm. And so every, you know, every move of God is to move you towards that place. And so, you know, he knew ultimately what I was graced and built to do because even at 42 years old and 62 years old, I I can't play ball. Nobody can play ball, you know, forever. And, uh, but the, the, the real identity of who I am, it lasts forever. It doesn't just last for whatever my time period is on earth. That's who I am eternally. And so uh, to, to care so much about the purpose that he's put in us to care so much about our success Mm -hmm. that he's willing to allow some broken moments to, to draw us to the greater us uh it's it's an amazing thing and and uh, so many people fight that that's right you know that's right. The, and, and that's the reason why i brought that up because there's i think we have a lot of identity issues um yeah. that we just don't understand who we are in christ we don't understand yeah. who god you know we we put these and even as a pastor um you know we, we make our identity as pastor but that's not our identity our pastor is a yeah. child of god it might yeah. be a calling but it's not our identity and, right. and, you know, and we got to we get to a point where we label ourselves instead of actually letting God be, you know, being God and being a child of God. That's right. Yeah, and so, absolutely. Yeah. So and so now you said that um, you, you got into a church and like I said, it's not what's in your home church. And sometimes it's hard for us to go back to the home church because there are people there that remember us <laughs> and, and, and yeah. you know, that remember the where we came from and, and, and remember those things. But now that you got into this other church. Um, you already had that calling of ministry. Do you remember where you started at? Was you starting just getting up and preaching or, or, or did you no. start like, teaching that kind of thing? No, and, and I think that's, that's a great question. And it's, I think it's something that all young leaders need because, uh, uh, you know, you earn, you earn your influence, you earn the microphone. You know, if that's what you're, if you're called to preach, if you're called to lead, then you, you know, uh, you, you earn the stage or you should. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Let me back up and say this. That's the way it should go. 
Right. Uh, I don't think that's the way it does go all yeah, the time. Yeah. That's the way it should go. No, I, you know, what's funny, and even I look at the, 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 just the providence of God in, in, in becoming a, a, a vision launcher, a church launcher, I think God even knew, obviously, that was in my future because the first thing that I did, now, first of all, uh, I just began to serve. I was just like, wherever, you know, I just, I, 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 I came up there. I'll just I'll be at the church. I'm going to serve and do whatever. And really the first thing that they laid uh, the responsibility on was the church that I was at had no young adult ministry. So out of high school up to 30 or so, had no, had no young adult ministry at all, had not had one. And so they kind of, uh, you know, tabbed me as the volunteer young adult pastor. And, but I had to build it from the ground up. And uh, so that's really kind of, probably my first um, roles of leadership uh, was just being a volunteer young adult guy and going to, to, to really uh, launch, you know, create a vision and, and launch a, a, a ministry that did not exist and make that uh, serve the vision of that house, serve the dream of that house and learn how to build that ministry. Um, and, uh, and just resource the, the, you know, the church and the kingdom of God any way that I could. And uh, so that was really the, you know, the, the, the first thing that I did leadership wise, yeah, I had a lot of things I had to, uh, that God had to work out in me because I was so, uh, cause I was such a, uh, an empty individual and, and felt alone in so many ways and all that I had learned. And I was, a, I was a, I was a single child. I was a, uh, only child growing up between my parents. They had kids separately later. Uh, but growing up as an only child, single parent home, things like that. I, I kind of, I had to do things myself you know, keeping myself, take care of myself. And so I'd become a, uh, a very independent individual, but I closed myself off with that. I was okay with being alone, you know? And so I didn't, uh, you know, large crowds, uh, being around a lot of people, getting in the life of the party, all that wasn't for me. I was cool to be in the back. I was cool to, uh, you know, just stand in the cut and just, you know, and, and didn't even care to be around it in a lot of ways, you know? So I even had to, to learn how to, um, uh, uh, to, to, to put myself before people and, and to, to draw out, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the people person that was in there. And, you know, I just, I, mean, I, I just had to force myself to some, some degree. I would get there early for church and, and uh, before services and hang out after services and things, just meeting people, introducing myself to people, getting to know them, you know, but just forcing myself to go. And so it was just, you know, a lot of, just a lot of lower level stuff, yeah. uh, just serving in whatever way I could and taking yeah. on the responsibility of you lay, you lay a responsibility assignment on me. I'm going to own it. Yeah. And, and I love that because, um, you know, some people think that, Oh, I got called into the ministry. I should go up and preach. Like we said, you know, but there's things you need to learn in the small things. Well, we, they're not really small. We say they're small, but, um, I, I've said this many times before, you know, if there's not somebody greeting, when somebody walks in the door, there's going to be a, a atmosphere difference there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, if somebody doesn't clean the church, yeah, nobody wants to be in a church that's got trash everywhere, dirt everywhere, you know, that kind of stuff, you know? And um, no matter where we feel that God is calling us, sometimes we have to um, start at the bottom to get to where we need to be. Uh, yeah. and it's we're, not the bottom, a, but it's, you know what I mean? We're a, uh, we're a gift happy culture. That's right. And, uh, and, and if you, if you look at, we really have to go back to the beginning and really understand the process and the order of things. God is a God of order, first of all. And, and, uh, so if you even go back to, to Genesis chapter one, when he made a decision to create man, he said, I'm going to create man in my image and in my likeness. Right. And image means nature, character, and likeness means function. And, uh, and so too many people, our world, whatever, the, the people in the church, they want likeness. They won't function, but function is a result of image. And so we have to develop the character. We have to develop the nature, the heart of God, the mind of God, the being of God in order to be, to do the things that God does. And uh, yeah, you know, you can't, you can't, um, and God's got it set up that way in a process of order. That's the only way that transformation and impact can take place. So I don't care what likeness you may think you have. If you don't have character, there is no transformation. That's right. That's right. And, and, you know, and again, I'm glad you said that because it, the, those that feel a calling into the ministry don't think just because a pastor pulls you over and says, hey, you know, I need you to teach a Sunday school class or I need you to teach a small group or I need you to teach this. Don't think it's a demotion to what you have. It's 
preparing you for a greater influence, a, a greater place to walk. I mean, the, the, uh, so once I was actually hired on full time into a pastoral role at that church, my very first service, so to speak, as, as a, as a full time uh, pastor at that church was a funeral. And uh, I, I wasn't preaching a funeral, but I was a part of it, you know, but I was a part of the pastoral staff, you know, of, that was hosting the funeral. And um, I'm in my suit, you know, and yada, yada, you know, and uh, my very first act of service as a full-time pastor in my first, you know, church service of some kind, I plunged the toilet. <laughs> so uh, it's just a matter of, of, of the heart. You got to be willing to, to uh, serve the house, serve the kingdom, make any job your job uh, and um, have a heart, you know, that wants to see the kingdom expand and grow, not self be glorified. Right. So now when you were, um, when you were at this position, did that start to birth the uh, church planning uh, mindset or did that? Yeah, so, you know, well, let me back up as far as it may, maybe not necessarily the church, you know, uh, planning mindset. I always knew from the moment I was called, I was built to lead, you know, I was built to be, uh, be the, the leader, if that makes sense. So I knew even, you know, when I was serving the roles that I was serving, that this was, this was, uh, uh, my preoccupation to my occupation, you know, this was, uh, you know, help shaping and developing, uh, ultimately the assignment on my life. Um, you know, what's funny is that, um, I always knew that I would lead. I didn't know how that would flesh itself out, but the more that I, I really grew, I'm, I'm going to be probably just real honest about this. The more that I really grew, um, and, and, and grew in the kingdom and, and some of the mentoring that I had, um, and, and just the ideology that, that was being developed in me. Um, I, I, I could not go the denominational route, which means that I could not likely take on a church that was already present. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I had an idea, I guess, about something that I thought was more, at least in my mind, uh, it, what God was calling me to was more pure and authentic to who I was. Right. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, even in historically, denominationally, yada, yada, uh, you know, we have very separatist churches, you know, whether that's by denomination, whether that's by color, ethnicity, whatever, and, you know, rejuvenates a very, um, uh, multi-diverse church. And so even from that regard, I just, uh, you know, I guess there was something that was building up inside of me that I, I could draw from and chew on the things that I was getting good from where I was at and from my root system even, but there was still a part of me that could not buy in totally. I got you. And, and God was developing is something different within me. And so I can't say that rejuvenate and its vision and all that was, was birthing me while I was still serving. I came to a place to where, um, uh, I knew it was time for me to do whatever it was that God was pulling me into next. And, you know, to make that long story short, it wasn't really until I left because my wife and I, uh, we, we left, we, we're not a church plant. So we didn't come out of anybody. We weren't sent with money. We weren't, we didn't have support. We're a vision launch. That's, that's what we are. We didn't have nobody. We didn't have no money. Okay. And, um, and so we, I resigned my position just because I knew God was drawing me somewhere else, but I didn't, I didn't know all of what and where yet. And so when, when I resigned, that was my full-time job. That's my paycheck. I didn't have nothing. God sustained me for almost three and a half years. Uh, as far as before I drew my first dollar from rejuvenate, yeah. uh, because when we exited that, we were in a season that we, we still didn't know what we were going to do. We knew what we were going to do, but we didn't know what we were going to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it was, it was really in that season, that wilderness place, that, you know, that wandering place kind of that we knew we were supposed to do something. We just didn't have the picture of what it was yet. And that's where rejuvenate was birthed. Yes. And so um, now rejuvenate and I, and I love this story. I mean, uh, I've heard bits and pieces of the story, but um for you that are listening here and don't know where Regina is at, it's in a mall, in Anderson Mall. Um, and um, how did that come to pass? The mall? Yes. So uh, we were going to do the whole traditional thing, you know, because I didn't know what else to do. We were going to do the whole school thing or whatever, you know, like a lot of church plants. 
And um, we had, this was the beginning of 2000. Now I left where I was at in, in August of 2013, 2000, beginning of 2014 is when I began to prepare kind of the business structure of Rejuvenate, um, applying for its 501c3, its incorporation in the state of South Carolina, things like that with the intention that we would launch uh, in January of 2015. And uh, uh, I went to apply for Hannah High School uh, with the, the, the uh, District 5 school board. And when I called them, uh, for one reason or another, they told me that they would not even let me fill out an application until I had all of my paperwork back from the government. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, that was going to put – the, you know, we had, this is in April, I believe, and that was uh, by government. They were telling us it was going to be six months minimum. So that's putting us now close to November before yeah. we would even potentially get our paperwork back to apply for the school. Then that would only give us a month if we got it to kind of promote that. And uh, I didn't know what we were going to do uh, because if that's the rule at Hannah, that's the rule anywhere in Anderson. It was going to be the rule anywhere in Anderson. That's, that's the district. And so uh, we, we were riding through, this was spring break of 2014. We were riding through Anderson and we went in the mall. I had my, I had two kids at the time. I got three now. And uh, the, the, we were just walking through there. We were at the far end of the mall, uh, the end right now where our discovery center and our uh, student uh, center is right now. Uh, but we were on that end and my wife and daughter were in Claire's and I was out kind of in the, in the mall way, just letting my son, he was just going bananas out there running around. And there was a property over to my left that was empty. And I just began having a conversation with God. And I just felt drawn by the Holy spirit to go look through the window and God, uh, I, I, I just looking through there, my mind just started running. And I literally just had a conversation right in the middle of the mall. I said, God, is this why I'm here? And he said, this is why you're here. And, um, this is why I come to the mall today. This is exactly why you're at the mall today. And, um, you know, I'm like, what well, God, this is, I ain't never heard of this. It's, you know, what do I, it's weird. What do I do? I mean, why a mall? And he said, why not a mall? He said, you think about the, the type of ministry that you're wanting, that you're trying to launch this, you know, this multi-diverse, multi-everything, all, all people kinds, you know, uh, the mall is probably the, the least segregated place in all of, any city, yes. you know what I mean? Definitely. Young people, old people, black, white, Hispanic, fat, skinny, tall, whatever. You know, <laughs> they all come there. That's right. Because even just even with that, it just speaks to what you're trying to accomplish. And so I left there and told my wife. I said, "Strain, I, I think this is why we were here today. And I don't, I, I got to find out who runs this thing because I got to, I just got to go from there. And uh, I know we ain't got enough time, but it's miracles, man. It's just miracles after miracles. It was a, an amazing thing. Simon Properties wow. ran it, which runs a lot of malls. And, and basically when I called, you know, the guy and talked to him, he said, um, he said, I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, he said, we've never had, we've had a hundred, over a hundred properties nationwide. We've never had this request. He said, so I'm going to have to go to the, to the big wigs and, and really ask them. Yeah. And uh, within a day, he called me back and said, they want me to show you property. <laughs> and that's, yeah. and you know, like you said, it's, it's perfect place. Um, for the vision that you have. Um, why, why Anderson? I know, um, you know, when you look at Anderson, I know it's probably where you live at around where you live at. Um, but, uh, I do know that, you know, in Anderson, we have, you know, new Springs, we have, uh, um, at the time, especially when you're, you're, you know, birthing this church, we have new Springs, which many people know new Springs all over our state. Um, and then that, you know, that's just one of the bigger churches. I mean, we have all different churches and then Greenville's not too far away. Um, we have relentless, relentless, but right at that time it was, um, if I remember, redemption outreach. We had that. Um, so why the Anderson area? What what was the in, that drew you there? Uh, I'm just going to tell you first. It's just the Holy Spirit because I we we were actually going to Tampa, Florida. We weren't coming to Anderson. Um, I to give a little bit of practical backstory um, as to I think what seeded some things spiritually. My Wilson side, my Wilson name is from Anderson. Mm -hmm. My great grandparents, uh, you know, lived off of Centerville Road in Anderson. And um, I spent a lot of time as a kid there with them. I spent a lot of, I, this is no lie. I mean, 
my grand that my great grandmother, who was more like a grandmother than me, um, I, I would almost bet my life that she went to belts every day, <laughs> belts and hammocks every day. And I'm not lying. I mean, she yeah. literally was in that mod. So I just remember, you know, being there even. And I think that's even, uh, you know, part of the serendipity of of it all. But um, I know my my grand my great grandmother was you know was a was a, a praying woman, and um, I believe she sowed seeds into that city that 50 years earlier than when I'm there was calling me there to some degree. Um, and so I think that's probably some of it, uh, or a lot of it maybe. Um, and, and so that, that's really all I, I can probably speak to from a practical standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, you are probably going to have to forgive me because I'm going to say something bold. It's probably going to get, catch me a lot of flack right now, uh, <laughs> from people that, that hear this. I asked God that same question. You said New Springs, the, the so-and-so. I, yeah. I asked God that, that very question. I was, uh, I was in a conference um, and I was pacing kind of the back aisleway area while uh, the guy that was actually preaching is, is a spiritual father of mine now, uh, ironically. But he was, while he was preaching, and funny enough, it, it, this conference was actually at Redemption. Um, I was pacing the back area and I'm just, I'm arguing with God, like why Anderson, you know, there's an elephant in the room there, essentially. Why, why Anderson, not only why Anderson, why the upstate, why the Bible belt, you know, because I, I've, I'm, I'm somewhat equipped for a metropolitan type area, you know? And so I'm like, why in the crap are you sending, you know, me to Anderson? And Bobby, I just gotta be honest with you, man. I just gotta tell you what he told me. And, And I know this sounds very presumptuous, but I'm a bold guy. Um, and at simultaneously, it's become the, 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 the uh, verse that we were founded on, but simultaneously that God began to speak to me about the why, the guy that was preaching, it's almost like it just converged for both heaven and earth because God was speaking to me the same verse, essentially, that the man was speaking, which yeah. was Zechariah 4, 6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. That's right. And basically what God told me is he said, Jason, he said, there are a lot of, a lot of things that that function off of might and power. A lot of things that function off of influence, off of resources, off of might and power. And he said, but I'm bringing a new voice. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm bringing a spirit. And he and basically told me that, that, that rejuvenate would spiritually parent the Anderson area. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's, that's really where it came from. When God told me to add, I knew why. I mean, I, I accepted that at that point, because if you're, if you're carrying something, different there with me than there then I, I understand that and so uh that's that's kind of how we wound up in anderson that's right um uh, now that first service do you remember that I, I know you do like it was yesterday that first service at the mall rejuvenate um probably nervous as i'll get out trying to hold it in um do, do you remember that that first sunday yeah i do uh you know i don't know that i remember every single detail but i do remember it i have pictures uh, of it. I have pictures in my mind of it. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, first of all, I'm a big vision guy and, uh, and, and I believe that what God has in store for rejuvenate and, and all is just, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. So, but, but I'm all, you know, as a visionary, uh, I want to see those things happen fast. So in my heart of hearts, I expect, I thought rejuvenate was going to blow up overnight. <laughs> and, uh, You know, we were having, we did like, uh, I had been doing a Bible study group in my home for a little while, uh, periodically. And so we just kind of moved those periodic meetings up there until we had our public launch, did a couple of preview, what we call preview services, you know, and then our first service was on, uh, I think it was Easter of 2015. And, you know, it's Easter and we're doing it on the day that you're supposed to plant a church on and, you know, it's going to be phenomenal and, you know, we going to have two services, you know, and all this kind of stuff. 27 people, I think. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I think that's what it was. 27 people. And, um, it, it, it was not what I thought it would be obviously metric, you know, in, in, in metrics and numbers. Um, but it was a good day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I even remember, the simplicity of what was going on even early in that time. Just, there are so many miracles that I can, I I can talk about. I mean, 
there's so many that it would take me this whole podcast to just lay out miracles. There's so many encounters and, and, and just in prayer and just the things that God was speaking to me and leading me in the spirit that, um, that just kept me energized and kept me pushing, even though, you know, it wasn't this, uh, you know, we didn't have 500 people on the first Sunday, you know what I mean? Definitely. Uh, which we couldn't anyway, we only had 80 chairs, but uh, <laughs> you know, and, and those were borrowed. Everything that we had was borrowed or, or donated to us. We didn't have anything that we owned. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a, I don't know, it was crazy, but I look back though. And, and I, I, uh, am just blown away. So many people, you know, use the verse a lot of times do not, you know, despise the, the, the day of small beginnings. Well, that's funny enough. That's actually located in the very same passage as our founding verse. Yeah. And, uh, so I've just learned to embrace that God was building something different yeah. and that, with God building something different, especially in the Bible belt, mm-hmm. that it, it's, it was going to take time yeah. uh, to really do something right, to really do something that had not just momentary impact, but that had generational impact. Yeah. Now, so, and I know, um, if I'm not mistaken, now y'all have about four buildings in the mall now, four? Five. five, five, five buildings in the mall, um, and uh, running two services or one service still? No, we just have one service and, you know, with COVID now, it cut down half, you know, half yeah. of what we had. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. I, but I know you moved, you had to expand. I know y'all did a lot of yeah. expansion to the room. Yeah. So our, very, our, our uh, worship uh, suite is where, it, you know, what's our worship suite now was our very first property. And so that initially had everything in it. It had, you know, rooms with, for kids and, and a kind of a general office area and, you know, all that, it was all in one. And so, uh, yeah, we actually, it, it, we expanded it one, two. We expanded it two times, I believe, before we actually got our next property, which was our kids' uh, building. And then, uh, and so then we had uh, a, another expansion, a third expansion, I think it was from there. That um, let's see, I'm trying to remember how that all went. The third expansion. I think was still within that one place. The fourth expansion then took over two more buildings, which is where we've got our admin offices, our welcome room and our admin offices and the shack, which is where our student ministry is. And when we did that, we made our original facility all sanctuary. Yeah. And uh, then of course uh, last year, uh, right before the turn of the year, we accumulated uh, our fifth property to launch our discovery center in. Yeah. And, um, with, with that, with building a staff with starting out with 27 to, to where you're at today. Um, and I'm not even talking about the COVID stuff that's, you know, but uh, what do you think the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest struggle was during all of that? Um, you know, I, th- I think the, one of the biggest struggles in which, well, I think one of the biggest struggles and maybe it's, maybe it's not, maybe it's just, maybe it's just internally to me, but, um, painting the picture for people yeah. regularly that they stay, you know, uh, I guess driven and, 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 and maybe not because I think the inspiration of the house, the spirit of the house and, and, and the passion that I had, I think really had, a, you know, had a lot, had people hooked, but I think in my mind, I feel like, I paint such a big picture, uh, you know, uh, uh, T.D. Jake said one time that the greatest struggle for a visionary is to know what you know in your spirit and yet had to have to live with, with what's reality and navigate between the two worlds. And that's, that was, that's tough is to see what I see. That's more real to me in my, in my mind, even today to see what I see in my mind, it's more real to me than, than what we presently touch. And, and, um, and making sure that people see that too. I think that's probably a part of it. You know, one of the greatest you know, struggles that we've had, and I'm just talking practical stuff right now, because I yeah. think there are spiritual things uh, on the other side of that. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, one of the greatest uh, struggles is, has been breaking mindsets of, of church, mm-hmm. you know, of those that we have that, that grew up in church of churched, uh, and, and what we would call, I guess, religious mindsets, um, to begin to embrace something, a, a kingdom truth that's just, uh, radically different. Um, 
you know, Jesus had a problem with that. I mean, you know, he didn't have a problem with the sinners. He had a problem with those with, with religious mindsets. And so I would say that's, that's been a challenge. That's probably been what's been a part of the slow moving process is uh, it's, it's easy to birth something in, in relationship to turning a big ship around. And while we were able to birth the ministry, we're still having to turn the ship of people's minds. And uh, so that's taken, that's taken more time with those that are, that are church people. Um, so that's been a little bit of a struggle on the flip side of that. I think that we face a lot of things. Um, you know, two of the things, two of the assignments that I know that we had coming to Anderson, uh, to break down was a spirit of racism mm -hmm. and, uh, and a poverty spirit, a poverty, uh, mindset, not, not just thinking, uh, not, not, not financially, uh, but true poverty thinking, believe people believing that the Anderson area has been riddled with a, with a, 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 a presence and a mindset that believes this is as good as it's going to get. And okay. there's, you know, people that have lived with, let me just accept my, my job. Let me just accept this good paying thing that I got here, you know, and this is as good as it gets and, and, and staying mediocre. Maybe it's more like a mediocre spirit. And those are two things that I, two of the things that I know that God came us to break away. And so battling those territorial devils spiritually, we battle a lot of territorial devils, you know, that I think that um, maybe sometimes some other places haven't had to fight. Uh, we, we battle a lot of territorial devils with the whole uh, um, diversity thing, you know, uh, and that obviously that's been a challenge. And then if you look, if you look over, uh, the history of, of rejuvenate, you know, since 2015, the things that we have faced culturally, whether that's, you know, what's going on over the past year, you know, uh, what took place uh, several, you know, a few years back with racial divide, cultural cl clashes and things, you know, a 2016 presidential election, you know, that, that, uh, and so just, and now a 2020 presidential election yes. and, and leading in that culture of so much, in your face division um to lead people together yeah. that aren't used to being together that's that's been that's been a challenge too but but we're we're doing it well i mean i i, I pat and i don't say that for me i mean I, 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 it's it's our people have to embrace that yeah. we're doing it well i mean our people are doing it well our people are a family and i've never really seen anything like it because we do have black white and, you know, Latino, yada, yada, and from every kind of place and from every age. And even during all of this, because they have embraced the teaching and they've absorbed it to make it a part of them, they've begun to live above, uh, you know, our world, above culture. And so as challenging as, it, as, it, as our culture has been over the last five years, um, I, I, you know, it, we've had success we've had success in building a family in that and, but it's been tough and i was going to mention i you know and uh, i'm glad you brought it up i mean i look at um your church and it's very uh diverse i mean it's it's a diverse church and and i thank god for people like that i mean I, i'm um i i'm still uh you know i'm a pastor at a, a denominational church yeah. and, and you know and and i'm always and i always preach that and always teach that we have to be a diverse church we always yeah. have to be we can't be just a white church, a black church, a Hispanic church. Uh, you know, we have to open up because, um, you know, we're, we're, I know the old saying that the old pastors used to say, you know, we're all going to be in heaven together. <laughs> we got to get used to living here, you know, but it's more than that. It's, it's, it's more than that. You know, nobody, we got to realize we're not better than anybody else. We've got to get on that mindset that um, hate in this world is from the enemy. Um, yeah. and, and it's something that is learned. It's not something that you're, that you're born with is something that you learn. I mean, I have a seven month old. He don't know the color of the skin. Uh, yeah. All he knows is those that wrap around him and love him and he's going to yeah. love them back. Yeah. And, and as, as the body of Christ, we need to get in that mindset that says, Hey, you know, no matter the color of skin, no matter the rich, poor, uh, like you said, that, that maintaining mentality of, of, Hey, I have, I have this, you know, I have a good life, but God has yeah. called you more and called you to yeah. better and called you to greater. Uh, you know, we have to get in those mindsets and, and you know, I'm glad that you brought those up. Um, I, I did see, and, and I'm not sure if you know these numbers off the top of the head, how many people have you baptized in the last five years? Uh, like water baptism? Yeah. And I don't, 
uh, I don't know. We honestly, we don't, we don't, we keep, we, we record, yeah. we don't, I don't know, probably, uh, I'm trying to think through because we probably average about 15 every time yeah. we have one and we do so probably 150. Yeah, I know. I mean, but like I said, I, I love it because the way you do it, you, you know, we, it's a big celebration. I mean, yeah. I've seen the Facebook post, I've seen the, the social media posts and things and, yeah. and, and seeing the people get saved. Um, I've actually had family visit your church a couple of times that, that love the atmosphere and love the, and, and, and again, because they felt safe. They felt, yeah. uh, as you said, in that family atmosphere and as the body of Christ, that's what we should be, a family. Um, right. and it doesn't matter if you're rejuvenate or restoration chapel. We're all family. Uh, we're all here for the same uh, ministry, the same thing. And, and you know, and, and I thank God for pastors like you that understand that and believe that. And any pastor that is, is hearing this or any young leader that is growing to this, have that mindset. Don't let your um, where you live direct your mindset of how you should minister. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, so both with color and then both with other churches, I, I see if I can speak to uh, both of those for a minute, mm -hmm. you know, everything in the kingdom transacts relationally. Yeah. There, I, I, you know, I, the church has lived for so long, especially the charismatic church, you know, the, the Pentecostal type church that has lived believing that somehow heaven was just going to fall from the sky. It was, you know, these, these magical things were just going to poof. The kingdom of the presence of God, the, the spirit of God, the acts of God, the works of God are transacted through people. And uh, so the kingdom is transacted relationally. Um, and, you know, we have to realize, first of all, to have relationship, we got to place value on people. Right. And you got to realize then that uh, there's value in every person. I don't care who they are, where they come from. There's value in every person. And, uh, and I have to value that in order to be able to create the opportunity for transaction with the kingdom. And when you separate black, white, you know, if you're not embracing, you know, your, your, your people of color, if you're not embracing young or old, whatever it is, you're missing out on an expression of God that was deposited in their life that you don't have. Right. And, uh, and how much is, now you're talking about the world, how much is the church missed a greater expression, the manifold glory of God, because we have, uh, isolated ourselves from being relationally transactional with people that weren't like us. That's right. And so, man, I can't afford with the assignment that I feel like is on my life, with the assignment that I feel like is on our ministry, on our city, on the kingdom of God, I can't afford to miss any opportunity for a greater expression of God and the gift of God that he may be bringing into my house or uh, into a relationship with our ministry to be able to further grow the kingdom. And so I don't care what you look like. That's right. I don't care where you were last Sunday. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? That don't make no difference to me. I don't care if you still got a cussing problem. We're going to work that out. You know what I mean? I don't That's care. Right. I, that stuff don't bother me. Um, it's I see the value in your life and the potential that's in your life. And I'm not interested in that potential laying dormant. You know? Uh, and, and I realize that my life becomes a success uh, if, if I can inspire yours to become one. That's right. Because we are interconnected. I mean, there's just no two ways around it. And so I, we have to value you people, you know, and I don't care how your mama and your grandmama thought about it and what they said around the dinner table and who they wouldn't let around the dinner table. They ain't God, That's right. you know, and they for sure didn't deposit not only their gift, the, 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 the other people's gift, and they didn't give you your gift. And so, you, you know, you can't take them as the gospel. That's right. And uh, so we have to understand the value, the power of relationship and the value of other people's lives that I miss a lot of God uh, and, 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 and being able to experience what God has. If I don't open my doors in my life to uh, embracing and connecting those people on the church side of things, uh, you know, one of the greatest con the, the problems with, with leaders, with pastoral leaders is they, they, uh, they are too territorial, you know, um, and I believe they're too territorial for, um, for a few reasons. First of all, I believe that they don't have clarity on their own identity mm -hmm. and, uh, and their own vision. They don't have their own vision to live by. My vision, so uh, I got so much to my vision, I can't even worry about yours, man. That's you right. know what I'm saying? I ain't got time. I ain't got time to worry about what, you know, I love restoration, but I ain't got time to worry about 
right. what restoration is doing. And if they trying to infringe on what I'm doing, I ain't got time for that. That's right. And, uh, 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 you know, Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall of, 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 uh, Jerusalem. And, 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 uh, while he was building the wall, you know, there were adversaries, critics that came and said, Hey, listen, I need you to come meet with us in the woods, you know? And he said, listen, I, I got too much going on to come down and meet. Why should I leave my job to come down and talk to you? That's right. You know, and that's leaders have to, to realize, you know, they don't have enough personal clarity and, and vision and identity to stay confident in who they are and what they do. The truth of the matter is, is that, uh, Bobby, the, the grace on my life is not to be at restoration. That's right. I can't, I don't have the grace on my life to lead, you know, your, your responsibility that's right. and likewise mine. And I, I got a confidence in that. There's nobody that's got the grace to do what I'm doing. That's right. And so I, I don't worry about that. And I think if we uh, realize that and, and we'll stop being territorial with it and, uh, and become a little bit more embracing towards, okay, that guy's got the grace of a head and that one's got the grace of an arm and that one's got the grace of a knee. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we begin to form the body. There's 207,000 people in Anderson County. Now I'd love for all of them to be at rejuvenate, but I know that ain't going to happen. Right. You know what I mean? But the, the idea of God is that they're all, uh, they're all part of the kingdom. That's right. We got to find a way to make that happen. So, you know, I, I just, I think we got to, um, uh, you know, got to pull up our big boy britches a little bit. That's right. That's right. Um, so at the end, there's two things that we always do at the end. The first thing is this, we do kind of a word association. So the first thing that comes to your mind, just, just go ahead and say it. Um, so this is always fun. Um, but it, it's not too bad. Um, so let's go ahead and start with that. The first word is salvation. Oh, am I supposed to give you one word or just tell you what I think? You can give me, yeah, it's a final word or a quote. It's completely different than what the church has taught. And so what I mean is salvation means the true uh, reference and terminology of salvation means to be restored. Uh, and so uh, salvation then doesn't become a moment. It becomes a process. And, uh, and we've made it, especially in our grace happy culture of the last 20 years in, in, in the Americanized church, we've made it a, an emotional moment of a raised hand. That's not salvation. Salvation is unto repentance and, and that requires a life shift. So salvation to me is more about who you are over a six month period uh, than, uh, you know, a six minute period. Definitely. The next generation. Vital to now, uh, you know, not vital to tomorrow, but vital to now. And um, we need, uh, this has been on, on my heart so much. Discipleship stays on my heart, but, but the Bible talks about the, the older men and the older women raising up the younger men and the younger women. And we need to, I just talked about value a minute ago. We need to, uh, listen, I'm 42 and I find myself now talking to my kids and my daughter saying, man, the way y'all do it today, that's crap. You know, I mean, I'm there. I'm like, my God, I'm becoming the guy that I used to hate, you know, <laughs> and that's okay in some things, but uh, it's okay to kind of joke and to, and, and to have your preferences, but to dismiss any generation as in value, as not having value, um, it, it's ridiculous. And so we have to find a way to close the generational gaps and see that the older generations become investing into the younger generations. Definitely. definitely. Prayer. Uh, God is calling the church back to that place heavily. We are on the cusp of what I, what I personally believe, and I, have, I, I feel this down in my bones, that we're on the cusp of what, has been, what will be the greatest outpouring in mine and probably two generations before me lifetime. And, uh, so, and so I believe that, uh, that prayer is foundational to that. I believe that God's calling the church back to a greater place of prayer as we shift uh, the year here. Um, worship. Uh, I'm going to go back to, to something like salvation, different than what we, it's been taught, because worship is not a song we sing. It's not an hour in service. Uh, worship is not even something you do with, uh, by Bible uh, understanding, is not even something that, that's done with, uh, with singing and with clapping and with, the, with, with a, an instrument. Real worship, because I have no indication whatsoever that Adam ever played a song and raised his hands in the garden. There's nothing that gives me, I'm not saying he didn't, but there's nothing that gives me any, any indication that he had a praise team and, uh, and, and an hour and a half of worship before he went to work in the garden, calling out animals, you know, 
Worship then, true worship to God. He said it's, it's spirit and truth. That's what he said in John 4. And he said the real worshipers will return to that place to spirit and truth. So that means then, okay, that uh, uh, let's, let's think about this because truth becomes more uh, uh, like the image. It becomes the word of God, the image of God. Spirit becomes the empowerment of God, the likeness of God, which means that real worship is me restoring and recovering my initial identity and living the purpose of my life. That's what worship is. Um, uh, preaching. Um, only 3% of the job. That's true. And for you that are thinking about going into preaching, listen to that very quickly. <laughs> and think about that. It's like you said, 3% of the job. Um, the word of God. Uh, the most powerful expression in all creation. The Bible says that uh, it was uh, uh, that the worlds were formed by the word. That's right. That's right. Um, music in church. Uh, man, I love it. I'm a music guy. I mean, I, I, I can't play a doggone thing, but I love, I love music. I'm moved by music. And I believe that move, music does move us or else uh, Paul, uh, Saul wouldn't have asked uh, David to come, to come play. Uh, I love music and I don't care. Uh, you know, I, I, I think, Obviously, we, we, we grow with our preferences, yes. uh, but I think we have, to, we have to be flexible enough to realize that there are other, if, especially if you're wanting to create diversity, yes. then uh, you got to realize there's more out there than just your preference. Yes. And so um, music, you know, the, the thing that we do and, and at Rejuvenate is that we do have a, a, a sound. Yeah. All right, we have our sound. Um, and, uh, and, and, and there is a preference to some degree to that sound, but we'll even take things from yesteryear or we'll take things from a different genre in a sense, not, not secular, but I mean, you know, versus contemporary Christian yeah. gospel, whatever. we'll take a different genre. And what we do in our worship team, know this, we rejuvenate it. We just yeah. make it us. Uh, so <laughs> okay. yeah, definitely. Um, and, uh, the last word association, uh, testimony. Um, again, it's like the word it's, it's, it's the, it's the word you have that's personal to you that becomes powerful to the influence of others. It's, it's one of the things that creates relationship that gives you access to greater discipleship. Open the door. Testimony is a doorway. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, the last question I always ask our guests is, um, you just preach the message. You just talk to somebody on the street, um, and they given their life to God. Um, what is the, what do you tell them is the next step for them? Um, uh, follow me. Yes. Follow me as I follow Christ. I mean, they've, we, they've got to get, they've got to get immersed in, in the life. You yeah. know, it, it's not that, because again, remember what I said a minute ago about salvation. That, be honest with you. I love it. I love somebody saying, Hey, I confess Christ. That don't mean as much to me as you, uh, showing back up. That's right. You know? tomorrow, not just next Sunday, tomorrow or Wednesday, whatever, you know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's, let's, let's begin a life of pursuing what that means. So it's just the invitation for that. Follow me. Definitely. Well, um, I thank you so much, Pastor uh, Jason, for joining us. Um, he is the pastor of Rejuvenate. Um, Rejuvenate is located at Anderson Mall. What's the actual address of that? 3101 North Main Street. Uh, I'd tell you the sweet number, but we got five of them now, so it don't matter. But right across from Books of a Million, our worship center is right across from Books of a Million inside the mallway. Uh, three of our main properties are on the J.C. Penney wing, and then we have two other properties on the old Sears wing. Yes, that's great. And, uh, and um, you are uh, meeting on Sundays right now at what times? Sundays at 1045, uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Definitely. And you have your youth ministries going to on Wednesday nights, correct? Student ministries on, on Wednesday night. Uh, all, uh, all kids stuff Wednesday night. We have full kids stuff on Sunday morning. Um, we have other stuff going on at any other times, but as far as the general public services, that's, that's that. Okay. And um, also uh, you can find them on uh, Facebook. You can also find them rejuvenate. Is it .com or .org? Rejuvenatechurch.com and .org. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah you can find you them. Facebook.com slash rejuvenate church. Uh, Instagram's Rejuvenate Church, Twitter's Rejuvenate News. 
<laughs> yeah. So, and um, also, I know they they do uh, live stream also, correct? Right now, we do. We have. Uh, you can go to rejuvenate live and actually um, kind of immerse yourself in our online uh, platform, or you can watch it through our app. You can watch it on our website. You can watch it through Facebook, YouTube. Definitely, and and I know one of the coolest things they do, and uh, uh, something that Restoration Chapel might take from them, and we're working on this, but uh, uh, was um, they do meet the pastor once a month. I don't know if y'all still doing it with that with COVID. We have it this coming Sunday. Party with yeah, the pastors. Yeah. So you can yeah. come and after service, correct? You meet with the pastors. And after service, uh, we we only do we do it every other month, and and essentially it's not really just about me. It's about our whole staff. We have our whole team there so that they can ask questions uh, to the individual ministry leaders. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just an opportunity for them to get to know other, uh, other first timers and to learn more about, it just gives them access to ask questions they can't ask on a Sunday morning. That's right. That's right. And uh, we will link everything down below. You'll see all the information there. And also in the, uh, uh, the, the description of the podcast, we'll link all that there where you can go and join them. So if you're in the, ever in the Anderson area, Stop by and see them. You might, if you're in the mall during the weekday, they might be there in the office. So you can stop by and say, hey, I know they'll um, uh, greet you and and love on you a little bit and just walk by. And they're all over the mall. Like I said, I remember last time I was at the mall, I was like, wait a minute, they moved here and they're here. Yeah, so um, you can see them all in the mall. Um, Before long, I I, I know it would probably rejuvenate malls. Let's go ahead and change that, right? Listen, that's the vision. That's the vision, see? I was about to ask you for your partnership and in, in, in prayer that, that we need more space now, actually. So, yeah, yeah definitely. So, uh, definitely, if you're listening to this, you're a pastor, you're, you're a church member, you're, you're just, you know, on fire for uh, Jesus, pray for Rejuvenate. Like I said, we'd love for them to see them take over the whole mall there in Anderson. And, um, and like I said, we call it Rejuvenate Mall. It just, it'll be, that would be awesome That's and great. It. That's um, it. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Pastor Jason. Anything you'd like to tell our listeners before you go? I mean, it's not really about the listeners. I just feel impressed on you. I appreciate your heart. And, uh, man, I thank you for, uh, you know, just your willingness to, to, uh, uh, to be open to other people, other leaders, you know, uh, other ideas. Um, just extremely grateful for your, your heart and um, your willingness to invite us into your life and your world and, and uh, your folks, your listening audience. And so I thank you for that. I, I know this may be out of protocol. I really want to pray for you uh, if you'll let me do that. Definitely. Um, that sounds and, awesome. Yeah, man, definitely. Yeah. That'd be great. You and in, in, in your ministry. Uh, God, I thank you so much for uh, Pastor Bobby and for Restoration uh, Chapel. God, I just, I give you honor uh, for who they are. And God, I just declare, Father, that there uh, be great grace and favor over them. I pray, Father, that you uh, would, would stir vision inside of him, give him confidence, Father, that what you've placed in his heart and in his life, he has the ability, Father, to walk out. You have already, Father, equipped him with the vision, Father, that you're casting in his life. I pray that you would, uh, Father, that you would stir up those that he leads, Father, that they would be inspired, Lord, uh, to reach deeper, to reach higher, to believe bigger, to have big dreams and big faith, uh, to believe you, God, for things that make no sense, God, to believe you for things that, God, they, uh, that, that 50 years, God, they couldn't even, uh, you know, things that haven't even happened, God, over 50 years, God, it, it would just begin to, to bring itself to fruition in their life, that they would uh, reach more people for the kingdom, disciple more people for the kingdom, resurrect more lives, God, awaken more purposes, God, than, Father, than what's ever been done in the five decades that they've been present. I pray, Father, for your, uh, Father, just that you would lift up Pastor Bobby and his family, that you would give them the energy, the strength, uh, and the rejuvenation that they need, God, to fulfill the assignment that's on their life. Bless uh, that house. May there be, Father, a covering over that house that protects it and guards it. God, I declare any manner of sickness and disease, God, infirmity, Father, to leave that place in Jesus' name. May it be a house of wellness and wholeness, God. And, Father, may they be a house of wellness and wholeness, God, to everybody they touch, Father, the people in the community, the other ministries they link with. God, may they be a well of wholeness, God, and and wellness. And, Father, I just bless you for that. I thank you for this opportunity. And, God, I just speak life over them in the name of Jesus. We give you honor. Amen. 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 Again, thank you so much, Pastor Jason. Um, for you that are watching this, you can watch this on YouTube and Facebook. Also, you can follow us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, on all those Anchor, um, anywhere you, Apple Podcasts, where you get your podcast at, just tap in Traveling Stories. Thank you so much for watching. Now that you've heard our stories, now go and tell your stories so people that are far from Christ can hear about how great our God is. 
God bless you. We love you, and we will talk to you soon. Oh, 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 oh